Ooh. I almost didn't see you there. I'm enjoying all this speed I just got for zero dollars. So let's clear one thing up. Diet, nutrition, training, all these things can make you faster, but that's not gonna make your bike faster. To make your bike faster, you're gonna need to have access to zero dollars. Now ask yourself, what type of riding are you going to be doing today? Are you gonna be doing enduro style riding where you're doing a long downhill and descending? Or are you gonna be riding cross country, kind of rolling terrain where you have to lay down the power constantly? If you're gonna be doing a lot of pedaling, uh, you want a bike with kind of a steeper seat tube angle so that you can get a better angle on the pedals. But whatever bike you have, you can just slide the saddle forwards. If you slide it forwards on these rails, that's going to effectively steepen your seat tube angle, and it could improve your pedaling if your bike has kind of older geometry, and it costs zero dollars. See, there's no one adjustment that is gonna work for every rider on every terrain with every style of riding. And so what is your riding more biased towards? If you are riding more cross country, might wanna consider dropping your stack, taking stack washers out of your steerer tube and moving them up on top of the stem. That's gonna move your handlebars a little bit lower down. And if you are riding cross country and climbing, you're gonna be in a better position to lay down power. Then that's not gonna be a perfect solution for for every rider on every bike, but I would try it. And on the contrary, if you're riding more downhill, more enduro, more jumps, you should try raising your stack height a little bit. It's gonna make your arms more bent and prepared to take up bumps in the terrain. It's gonna get your weight a little bit further back, make you more confident. And so those are two things you can try and they'll cost you zero dollars. So here's an interesting one. The other day I was riding that Ozark Trail Ridge, that $400 Walmart bike. I was actually having a lot of trouble descending on that thing because the seat post was too long. I'm five foot four, I could cut the seat post down. Cutting down the seat post would not only remove weight from the bike, which can potentially make it faster, but it would also just give me a better position for descending, give me more bike control. I would definitely be faster and it would cost $0. Here's one you can make on the fly. If you're gonna be settling in for a really long climb, try increasing your compression. That's something you should know anyway. On some forks, there's actually gonna be a lockout. On some shocks, there's actually gonna be a little icon that shows you what the climbing position is. Or you could just crank up your compression damping. It's gonna make your fork or your shock move less. And so when you're pedaling and moving around, more of your power is gonna be transferred to the wheels rather than just moving the bike around. And it should go without saying that this is gonna cost you zero dollars. Maybe today you're riding kind of smooth, hard packed trails, flow trails, swoopy berms, jumps, rollers, all that stuff. Try increasing your tire pressure. Maybe on normal single track, you're running like 22 PSI. Try bumping it up to 30. That's gonna give you lower rolling resistance and allow your bike to carry more speed. In certain situations, it could certainly make you faster. And on the contrary, if you're riding really chattery terrain, lots of little tiny bumps in quick succession, lowering your tire pressure might actually make you faster because there are gonna be less vibrations through your bike frame, you're gonna have better control, your bike's gonna track better. Just don't go so low that you start having some sketchy problems. And the best thing about changing your tire pressure, zero dollars. And going back to your suspension fork, if you're riding trails with lots of pumps and rollers, pumping can generate free speed. And so adding some air pressure or increasing your compression can actually make you more effective at pumping. It's definitely gonna make you faster and it costs zero dollars plus tax. 
Now you also might be riding on clipless pedals. That is to say, your shoes snap into your pedals and lock into place. There are some adjustments you can make to the cleats on your shoes to try and get a little bit more speed. If you're riding more cross country, a more forward cleat position could actually be beneficial. And if you're riding more enduro and downhill, moving your cleats backwards a little bit might help. These are by no means perfect solutions for every rider and every bike, but those are some things you might wanna try because they'll cost you zero dollars. Here's one that might cost you zero dollars depending on your setup. Increasing the travel of your fork, over forking your bike. If you're riding a lot of downhill, you could increase the travel of your fork potentially by 10 millimeters without spending any money whatsoever. There are travel spacers inside the fork. If you remove one, it'll actually increase the travel. This is gonna vary across forks, and so look at your manufacturer's documentation. Increasing the travel of your fork is gonna make your geometry more aggressive. It's gonna move your weight further back. It could potentially make you faster just on the downhills, and if that's where you're trying to get faster, then it's worth trying because, again, it's zero dollars. So we talked about some things you can do to make your bike faster, but there are also things that make your bike slower. And by avoiding those things or remembering to do certain things, you can ensure that your bike stays fast. You wanna protect that zero dollar investment. First of all, you might not wanna let your bike get too dirty. This is not that dirty, but even a little dirt technically makes your bike slower. It's adding weight and it's making it so all your parts are just not moving as smoothly. That's a really easy way to make your bike faster, clean it. It's kind of more like undoing something you did to make it slower, but worth noting. Now I know what you're gonna say, the water costs money. Um, don't get cute with me, it's zero dollars. So cleaning your bike is one way to reduce weight because you're getting dirt off the bike, but you can also shed pounds that are already on the bike. Not always the best decision, by the way, but if your only goal is to make the bike faster, well, you could just run your tires with no sealant. If you're running four ounces of sealant per tire, that's a half a pound you just shed from your bike. It'll work great and it'll definitely make you faster until it doesn't. Truthfully, some of this weight weenie stuff makes such a tiny difference that the humidity level or what you felt like when you woke up this morning will make a much bigger difference. But you can get silly. You could run three brake rotor bolts instead of six. In fact, just take the brakes off. It's gonna make the bike a lot faster and definitely lighter. But while we're on the topic of silly stuff, you can cut nubs off of your tires, decrease the rolling resistance, technically decrease the weight, and go a lot faster until you need some traction. Although cutting off tire nubs strategically could actually help clear mud and it could even make you faster and more effective in certain situations. They make tools especially for this. I don't put much stock in it, but it could make you faster. And assuming you're not using some special tool that you bought for it, it's zero dollars. So there you have it. Those are some ways that you can make your mountain bike faster for zero dollars. There are lots of other ways to get faster. Some of them involve spending money. Some of them involve self-improvement. And then some of them are basic bike maintenance tasks that have no place in this video. So I hope you got some valuable information out of this video. I would say if you can make your bike faster for zero dollars, then just about any budget is gonna work for you. And so I hope you learned something. And if you didn't, I hope you at least found this video entertaining. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time. Here's another super weird one. Some racers will put Crisco or cooking oil on their bike frame so that during a race, mud will just slip off of the frame. That'll make you faster, but is it technically zero dollars? Well, it is for me because I didn't pay for this. My wife did.